Hey, Joe versus Volcano. Oh, Boom. Boy. I Nailed think it. I think your dad jokes are getting worse as time. I think they're on. getting better. Mm. Um, I ran that one by everyone at my house. So, <laughs> so uh, two people. And, and it and it killed. It killed. That's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's up? <laughs> we just got off the boat. And we're ready to re review. Oh my god, you could see the water droplets on the <laughs> And We're ready to review Joe versus the volcano. Yep. Exactly 30 years ago. Well, in March. Mm, 30 years yeah, ago. in March. <laughs> we're a bit behind on our review rewinds, but that's okay. Weird times. And what better movie to talk about? Than Joe versus the volcano. Yeah, the I, the uh, it's like a prequel to Castaway. A little, I mean, it's like it kind of is. With without this, there's no Castaway. Without this, there's no uh, Sleepless in Seattle. And without this, there's no You've Got Mail. So, where would we even be as a society if we didn't have those two movies? Where would we be as a society if we didn't have a movie that immediately dates itself with a title and intro? <laughs> <laughs> So this movie, it stars Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, uh, mostly. I mean, there's other people in it, but cast is pretty small. Uh, this is their first time working together, you know, this before, you know, they blew up as giant star, like rom-com stars. Tom Hanks plays Joe. He is this dude who's just kind of going through life. He's unhappy. And all of a sudden, he finds out he's got this, this, disease that he's gonna die yeah, it's called and a so, brain cloud they call it a brain cloud a brain cloud yes uh so he's just got this this haze over him and all of a sudden uh this guy kind of comes up to me and says hey man listen i need a guy to jump into a volcano <laughs> it's this, this island there's some shady stuff going on he's like i want this mineral that they have but uh they need a human sacrifice to jump into a volcano mm -hmm. um and I think you're my guy because you're about to die anyways, and I'll pay for the whole thing. I'll let you go live your life you know, the, for the next, like, you know, few weeks. Just enjoy life. Jump in this volcano. What do you have to lose? And, and he's like, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like him going to the island. He meets, he meets Meg Ryan's characters. Man, and she is such a character actor. They kind of go off, and they start to fall in love. And yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's Joe versus Volcano. That's uh, that's kind of a, now it's this kind of cult classic. When I watched it as a kid, I was like, man, this movie's bizarre. <laughs> and then, you know, just over the time through watching it, it's like, it is a very, very weird rom-com. It's like, and if you oh, think yeah. about the guy who directed it, John Patrick Shanley, I have his Wikipedia pulled up. Let me just re read off some of the movies he's done. So he won an Academy Award for writing for Moonstruck, the Cher and Nicolas Cage movie. Makes but sense. But then he also did a live uh, based on the true stories where the plane crashed and they had to eat each other. Yes. Oh. But then he uh, also directed Congo. <laughs> and then 13 years later, after Congo, he had to let he had to let all that stink go away, and he directed Doubt, which is based off his own. Whoa. Play. <laughs> so if you that think of this guy, yeah i know if you think of this guy's trajectory it's insane especially when you think about joe versus the volcano and it just starts off as like this weird abstract idea of like corporate society and how it feels to be and uh tom hanks's character is just like miserable and he oh, looks awful he looks he's got like a mullet and it is gr i mean this <laughs> It is, it is bizarre. But you know what? I love it. I I told you this a few days ago, but this is weirdly my favorite Tom Hanks movie. This is the movie that I come back to over and over again, and I don't know why. I just, it's just to me, it's it kind of yeah. Like I think I caught it on TV once, and it's got that like just dour, like start, and you're like, what is it? Why am I why am I watching Tom Hanks be so miserable? Yeah. And then it just kind of 
take it kind of swept me away it was it's it's a weird it's a super duper weird movie. and then yeah and then when they get to the the island it gets like even weirder because the the people that live there it's the way i remember it because i haven't watched it all in a while i remember them just like putting on a performance it seems like they weren't actual people that lived on the island i think it was like well yeah they, they're obsessed with orange soda too yeah yeah, yeah. and so like <laughs> everything they have everything they use or everything they have on that they're wearing is made out of like orange soda cans and bottles yeah a very, and i think yeah very weird and abe vagoda is one of the guys <laughs> yes so i don't know if it's culture appropriation now or what or they were just putting on an act because i don't want to spoil anything but there are some things that come up that we learn one of yes. the meg ryans tells us some stuff and it's not what you see at the very end of the movie yeah yeah i know so but that was that's what makes the movie better to me i think is like knowing what happens at the end makes it much more fun to watch well yeah and it's a i mean it's that story of listen if you had nothing to lose if you had just if you were gonna die what like (laughs) would you would you really live your life would you really like if you had a miserable life and you hated it and then you're you realize i'm not gonna have it much longer would you really take that time to say you know i'm gonna do whatever i want to do and i think that's what i love about it so much it's kind of freeing it's kind of yeah. You're like, man, it would be really cool to to just sail away and have these magic luggage uh, <laughs> trunks. Do you think uh, Drake's song Yellow was based off of Joe versus the Volcano? I'm you not going to say no. You can't prove me wrong because it's the same idea. <laughs> Can we talk about, so we kind of touched on it, but Meg Ryan playing three different characters in this movie. For some reason, I don't really understand why there. There's not like it. You know how like in Peter Pan, there's that idea of okay, the dad is also playing Captain Hood. Yeah. I just don't know. I I I feel like yeah. I wonder if there's something in there that's like that. But then in my head, I'm like probably not. They're probably like, hey Meg, we just need you to throw on this wig. And, well, my you know. my theory of the movie is that his brain cloud. You know, I don't know if he actually went to the island or not. I think he's just living in his brain most of this time. And so that's why we see all the Meg Ryans. Yeah. Because when I saw it as a kid, I was like, oh, it's just a dream sequence for his like final few months. And he's, he probably went on vacation, but he loved, uh, what's the original? Dee Dee. Yeah. yeah, and, like, yeah. and the boat, what's the boat called? The boat's called the Tweedledee and the first Meg Ryan's called Dee Dee. Oh, Dee Dee. oh my gosh. So, I mean, it's like, there are things that come together. Yeah. And I think it's a dream sequence, but it's also doesn't end and it, it doesn't bother you to tell you if it is or isn't a dream yeah. sequence. And that's what I like about it. It's like it's like that American Psycho ending, m- the movie version, not the book, where yeah. it's like you can't tell what's reality and what's fake. And I think that's what makes it a better movie. To me, I've just always I've always played it like this is legit happening the whole time because <laughs> even, <laughs> like, it makes it's it crazier. <laughs> it makes it crazier. Because at the end, what again, we won't give it away, but what happens to him and to her is so <laughs> stupid, but so great. But it's like, I think what it is, is it's that like, that, uh, oh, that's just so sweet and so naive. Like, and there's like, oh, yeah, it would be great <laughs> if that happened. This is what I like about the late 80s, early 90s types of movies. So you have like, joe dante making the gremlins movies and then gremlins 2 is just like this bizarre thing but then you also have joe versus the volcano and then uh, a couple years later you have this movie called freaked if anybody's ever watched that (laughs) and it's just like these insane movies that you don't see today where it's just over the top insanity some people won't even find half of this stuff funny but then you have like Roger Ebert. He gave this. He gave Joe versus Volcano three three and a half out of four. So I mean, yeah. I think one of his like most controversial like ratings. Like I mean, people yeah. did not like this movie. I and there's something also about those '90s movies like that, like late '80s, early '90s, that just make them feel infinitely old. Yeah. Like I mean, <laughs> like I watch this movie and I'm like, this has got to be like, like when I watched it, I was like, this got to be 30 years old, and I watched it like. 15 years ago <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like what it, it's just it's so insane let I me mean, like same thing with, like gremlins 2 gremlins 2 feels like it was made 
40 yeah. years ago. Like it is, well, it's, but, but it's nice. I, I like yeah. that. Kind of it's thing. the, yeah. it's the look of the film that they were using back in the day. I don't know what yeah. they shot on for these movies, but they feel like they're stuck in, in that certain, moment. Yeah. And it's, that's what makes them so perfect. Like Ghostbusters even has it. It's like, Oh yeah. Feels like an eighties movie. You buy a record. It, it's got that kind of sound to it. Like same mm-hmm. thing, you know, yeah. you got that grain makes it a, it, it distinguishes it a little higher than yeah. everything else. And that's why Joe versus the volcano deserves to be I don't I don't know what list it deserves to be on, but it deserves to be on a good list. And you know what? This is what's so great about this movie too, is right now it just feels one, it feels so nice to see just such an escapist movie. Mm-hmm. But also when you take into consideration that Tom Hanks is now like recovering from yeah. the coronavirus, it gives it like the little like Ooh man, like he was close. You know, he could have been like this could have been bad and and everything's okay now. It just makes me feel good inside. I don't know what yeah. it like this movie, it's it, it doesn't deserve an Academy Award. It doesn't deserve like it, it, it didn't deserve to to make all this money and to yeah. like be like a great movie, to be like a huge hit, but like I love that it's a cult movie and I love that it just it makes me feel feel warm inside a little yeah. bit. You know, like, like I'm nice staring song. at the like I'm staring at the moon and I'm like Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was staring at the sun. Well, that's not good. <laughs> the brain cloud is something that we all experience, and then we go on vacation, and it sort of just like resets our brain. We all have go. We all when we get into work, and we've been working for so long, we get these brain clouds, and we're just like, oh, I can't take it anymore. But then you're like, well, if you're lucky enough to have vacation days, you can use them and go on vacation. But not everyone has yeah. that. That's it. That's all I got. It's gonna fall out of. Falling down. I don't know what's happening here. See you later. It's taking a very long time. (laughs) There it is.